hello my lovelies welcome back to my channel this is your girl angel from simply angel tia in this video we're gonna be working on these shorts here and as you can see they're just nice simple shorts the only thing here is we alternate the two different colors like this it makes it look nice um i will be doing the top as well at a later time uh but for now this is the shorts that we're gonna be working on yep if you like them go ahead and subscribe and uh, then get this video started let's go ahead and do that okay my lovelies before we start this project i'm gonna show you the materials that we're using for it and as you can see here i have my two colors uh, that we're gonna be using for the shorts um this is from uh, the company azurite uh, it's 100 percent acrylic this is gray to me but they go by color number 3074 and it's a lightweight number three recommended hook size is three and a half to four millimeter crochet hook and the skein like this is 50 grams uh, or 140 meters okay so i'm gonna be using this here this is the exact same brand they just rebranded and started to add this by timids uh, but it's the exact same uh, company everything is exactly the same except for obviously for this one the color is 0211 but I will just call this an off-white. It's not exactly white. It's a little bit of an off-white, okay? So these are the two colors that we're using. Even though they're recommending three and a half to four millimeter crochet hook for this, I'm going to be using a five millimeter crochet hook just because I don't want my shorts to be too kind of rigid and kind of hard. I want them to be nice and loose and fluffy. So I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook, which is H8 US. I have my scissors here to cut my uh, strands. I have a darning needle to be able to join um, our band because we're going to start by doing a band, obviously. I have some stitch markers here to mark where we need to mark and then a tape measure to determine our size. Okay, so with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, my lovelies. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the band for our shorts. And as you can see, I'm just going to start by doing a slip knot to start our foundation chain. And I'm going to leave a hanging string kind of about that much to be able to join uh, our two sides of the band. Then I'm just going to go ahead and do a slip knot. Okay, so that's how I do my slip knot. And then I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to start by doing a chain of 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so that's going to be the width of our band. So it's going to be about that wide okay and if you want your band to be wider you will do more uh, chains it doesn't matter how many you do you can do 15 20 uh, to make it longer if you want it shorter you just reduce the amount of chains that you do here now we're going to pivot our work like this we're going to skip that first uh, stitch right there in this next one we're going to go to the back of the chain and do a single crochet then we're gonna go into the next one here and complete a single crochet and again we're just working our single crochets in the back of the foundation chain so instead of going into the front we go in the back okay and we're gonna do this all the way to the end and that should complete our first row of these and then we're gonna do the next probably a hundred something to create the band I don't want to skip too much ahead but i will talk to you a little bit about how you can get the size that uh you need to fit you or the person you're making it for okay so i'm just going towards the end of this first row here okay and then i'll talk to you about how to do the second row which is going to be our repeat row okay so that's our first row here you should have 10 stitches all together here because we set it by 11 and we skip the first to go into the second to do our first single crochet then you're going to chain one to turn and turn to start row two and chain one doesn't count as a stitch so it means you go right into the very first stitch here grab the back loop and complete a single crochet and then you're going to go into the next go in the back and complete a single crochet into the next go in the back and complete a single crochet and this is called single crochet back loop single crochet okay just we just go in the back loop as you guys know there's a single crochet there's back loop single crochet back loop double crochet back loop uh, 
half double crochet so this one is the one for the single crochet if you're going in the back loop okay so you just go ahead and complete this part here and this is your second row and like i said this is our repeat row here for the work so as you can see i'm going into the last one here for this last one i'm not gonna go through the back loop i'm gonna go through both loops so instead of going here i'm gonna grab the front one as well and just go through both loops oops go through both loops like this okay so that's the end of my second row which is a repeat row i will quickly show you how to start the third you chain one and turn and you will chain one at every beginning of each row here for this part and then you will go into the next stitch single crochet the next stitch single crochet all the way in the final one go through both loops and then chain one turn and begin the next row okay so as you can see here this is pretty much what you're gonna do until you have the size or the length that you want now what are we talking about the length i'm gonna put this down so i can talk to you without being distracted so what you will do is you'll take your tape measure you will put these around your waist uh and then measure around your waist to see what that's gonna come up to and let's say you're gonna measure up let's say your waist line is about 26 inches so you're gonna do the length of this here to come up to 26 inches when you stretch your work when you stre stretch your band it should come up to 26 inches let's say it's a uh, 36 35 whatever it is you're just gonna do keep working on this keep measuring it while you stretch it to make sure it comes to the circumference of your waist okay when you have that done come back to the video and i will show you what to do to start the next part of the project okay see you guys in a bit okay my lovelies um i have gone ahead and completed the length that i need here for the circumference of my waist so um i pretty much just took my tape measure and like i said you would have to measure the waist of the person that you're making this for and when you have the circumference you would go ahead and complete the number of inches that correspond to that so my waist line is about 28 okay sorry i'm just detangling my uh my uh, tape measure here so it's about 28 so if i take this and i measure and i stretch it to where it's gonna take me to my waistline as you can see it goes even past that it goes to about 29 okay sorry i'm not holding this very straight it's just because uh yeah there you go so if i stretch it like this it goes to about 29 can you see that okay so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit over as long as it's not under because if it's under it's going to be too tight it's going to be uncomfortable and you don't want that so when i stretch this it goes around my waist a little bit nice and loose and comfortable not too loose but nice and comfortable okay so i made some mistakes when i let you guys go from the last clip one i had realized i had skipped a stitch when i showed you guys how to do one here so instead of 10 stitches that i started with i ended up with nine and I started to see my work kind of go a little bit narrower and then I undid it and I restarted over. And by doing that, I forgot completely to um, uh, to leave my string longer here, which is fine. Um, but I ended up making the same mistake at the end. Look at this. <laughs> so as you can see, this is where I started to lose, uh, I started to go down. So I counted, I actually have nine stitches here. I'm supposed to have 10 but don't worry about it i'm not gonna go back and undo this number of rows here to to redo it i have already done that once and i don't want to go back and do it but it's also it's also just to show you guys that if you made a mistake and kind of lost a stitch or added a stitch as long as it doesn't look too much off like as you can see here obviously it's a little bit fatter here and then it gets narrower i just thought hey sometimes mistakes happen so instead of going and redoing it doesn't actually make that huge of a difference okay so I made two mistakes. I fixed the first and then I made the mistake again and I do not want to remove these one, two, three, four, five, six, six, twelve 12 rows. So it would have to be these 12 rows that I would have to undo because as you can see, I made a mistake right here and I skipped a st stitch at the beginning for some reason. But we're going to leave it like that. So for those of you interested, I did about 90 rows all together here. So from here to here, I did 90 rows. And that is what my size is. So we're gonna fold our work like this to be able to um, start to join these here 
so we can work on our shorts okay and because like i said i did not leave these out i ended up cutting some yarn uh just from the inside of my of my of my uh, skin and so i have this and then i'm just gonna put it into the darning needle so i can join it um but if you do have it so that this was left longer you just have to insert this uh into your darning needle and then you're good to go so i will line up my work like this this side is gonna have 10 inches uh 10 uh stitches and this side will have nine because as you can as you remember i made a mistake by uh losing a stitch on this side and the beginning side i have 10 but i'll show you how to fix that so that as well it's kind of have become a little bit of a good thing that this happened so i can show you how you could just walk around that instead of undoing everything okay so we're gonna go into this stitch here and then we're gonna go into the stitch on the other side and we're gonna go and pull that through you're gonna have a little bit of this string leave it hanging but what you will do is you will knot it you will just do this knot here like this and do it one more time just to make it nice and tight like that okay and you're gonna leave these two hanging we're just gonna remove them later and then what you will do here this is the side that has nine and this is the side that has uh, ten so what you will do here we are just gonna double up straight from the beginning so we're gonna go into that stitch one more time that we had gone to but on the opposite side we're gonna pick the second set of stitches we're gonna go like this actually we're gonna grab the inside of the loop and then we're gonna grab the outside of the first on the other side so there's gonna be this first one and the second one goes through the same one on here and then we're gonna pull and then you're gonna go into the next so now you should have enough stitches here to match up from one side to the other and you can see there's a little bit of a gap that's left over here we're gonna bring that yarn like this so that we can move it forward from the back okay a little bit like that okay and then now you just kind of work your stitches as per usual we grab the inside on this side here and the outside on the other side uh yes like that and then we pull we grab the inside and the outside on the other side and pull and again when you pull make sure you're not pulling it too hard because you don't want your work to look all wrinkled up you want to do it so that it just looks good enough that is not too tight and not too loose and as you can see here now what the, our stitches are continuing to line up properly because we fixed it by going into the same spot twice on one of the sides that was less and then this is our second last stitch and then now into the last stitch right here we go through both loops and we grab both loops on the other side like this and we bring that through we pull and then because it's our final one i go normally through it twice so that's the first time i did and then for the second time i bring my loop around like this and this counts as almost like a chain one and then locking it in so it locks it in like this and then we are done voila okay and this is the other side this is how the other side looks like right here and i cut this string obviously too much so i'm gonna just leave it hanging there I'm going to bring my yarn. So we're going to leave this hanging. I'm going to start working with my working yarn here. Okay. So this is what we had left from the working of the band. And then I'm just going to go here and I'm going to start working on it. Okay. I'm going to do a chain of two. This work is going to be consistent of double crochets. And I'm going to chain two counts as a double crochet. So I'm going to go into this stitch, not a stitch, but like this space here and complete a second double crochet like that. Okay. And as you, as I told you guys, I have 90 rows in this. So the best thing for you is to make sure you have 90 stitches when you go around. So the way you do that is, as you can see here, these bumps here counts as two rows from the single crochet that we did in the back loop so it just all means that you just have to go and make sure if you do one stitch right here you will do another stitch right on top of there and that makes it so that you have this stitch here covered these two cover this stitch here so there's two there and then for this section here you're going to put one right here right there and one on top here okay 
and then you just continue to work these double crochets around until you come back to this section here so do that go around here count make sure you have 90 if you have a little bit more for whatever reason it's good if you have way less if you have one or two less maybe three it's okay but you don't want to have more than five less because then this section here is going to be too tight you want this stretch here to be consistent with this as well okay so go ahead and complete your double crochets around the circumference of the band when you have completed that come back to the video and we're gonna start the second row of this we're also gonna change the color because we're gonna alternate the white of white and the gray for this uh, project okay so i'll see you guys when you get to this section right here okay my lovelies so i have completed my first row here of the double crochet stitches and as you can see i reached where we began the stitches here and i've counted i have my 90 uh rows all together here okay or my 90 stitches so what i will do here then is i'll just go on top of that uh double uh, chain two that we did to start the row and complete joining this like this now i'm gonna cut the yarn because we're gonna change it to the off white i will cut it somewhere here and then i'm going to bring in and ooh, i will cut these as well when i was working on my stitches this was becoming a little bit bothersome so i'm just gonna cut it somewhere here leave a little bit of it in case we need to undo that part but for now i'm just gonna cut it short because it's not as easy to work with it like that anyways i'm gonna bring in i'm gonna bring in my off-white color here and i'm going to start working that into the work and we're gonna pretty much be switching the colors here every row okay so with that said i undo this part that we did here to change the color i'm gonna go into that bring it in and as you can see i have it like this i'm gonna hold this in the back here to make sure it doesn't pull through when i put my color then i'm gonna bring my white of white and just loop it through like this then i'm gonna do a chain of two and turn okay and you can pull these two colors here just to tighten it you can also just knot these two colors here so that they stay knotted and then when we turn we're gonna go ahead to so this count as a double crochet we're gonna go ahead into the next stitch and complete our double crochet with this of white color and then a double crochet here and then a double crochet and then we just continue to work our double crochets around the circumference until we come back to where we just started off here and then slip stitch change back the color to the gray do another row around and we will just continue to do that like that okay so for now go ahead and complete this row i'm gonna do the same i'm gonna come all around until i get back here and then when i get here i'm gonna come and change the color again to the gray color and then I'm gonna, after starting that row off with you, I'm gonna have you guys work until we have what we need. I'm gonna knot this right now because I don't want it to come off on me. So all I do is just kind of do the knotting here like this and I'll do it one more time. And what we will do is we will weave all of these in later, okay? But for now, work your stitches until you come back to the beginning here and then come to the video so I can show you how to start the next row and then explain what you need to do to continue to build your work i'm also going to talk about maybe increasing i'm not going to do the increasing itself on camera with you but i will explain how you can increase in case you have really really wide hips and you need to make sure that it's going to go over your wide hips um, i will come back when we change the color to explain how you you can do that okay but for now let's meet back when you get to this section here okay my lovelies i have completed my second row here which is in the off-white color and as you can see i have come back to the beginning of the row so now we're gonna go ahead and uh, change the color and now that we know we need to slip stitch on this side i'm just gonna cut my color my white color right here off white you will hear me say white it's just a slip of the tongue but you guys know this color that i'm using here is of white even though it looks quite white here i think it's because it's against these uh blackish background and the gray 
so it pops the white quite a lot but it's actually an off-white color okay so now that i have done my last double crochet there this one here is connected to here which is our chain two from the previous uh, from the beginning of this row so i'm just gonna go ahead and bring that in like this and again hold that off white color behind so that i don't bring it back out this way and then just do a go through like that and do a slip stitch and then i can pull to just kind of tighten that and then i will do a chain of two and turn and as i turn i also flip it inside out so that it's easier for me to work on it from this angle and then i continue to do my double crochets in this color and then i just repeat this over and over until i have say my what i'm looking for okay so as you can see this is going to be striped with off white gray off white gray off white gray all the way until we have what we need okay now i'm going to talk to you a little bit about how you will increase and i will show you how to do it here but even though i'm not increasing here yet i will show you how you would go about doing the increase and again this is where i changed the color i'm just gonna nod this for now just to be safe and that it doesn't slip off and unravel my work okay so we do that then we leave that here okay all of these we will just cut them out at the end so now i'm going to talk to you a little bit about how you would increase which i will i have wide hips so this is my shorts are going to go right where my belly button is like they're gonna this much of it will cover my belly button and the rest of it will fall down okay so let's flip it this way so this is how my um this is gonna go around my waist and then it's gonna come down like this but my belly button will be around somewhere here so what i will do is i will work my work until it just kind of comes on the, at the beginning of my hips okay so as you know you if this is your waist right here your body is going to start to open out like this because you have hips and then it goes down like this okay towards your legs so i'm gonna do not sure exactly how many but how i will figure out if i'm not putting it against my body to figure out what i will do is how high i want it i will put my tape measure there and then i will go to a, a section where my hips start to open out so let's say my hips start to open at six inches then i will work until i get to six inches and then i will start to increase and the way i increase will be depending on how wide i want it um but um yeah so that that will be it depend on how wide i want it but what i will do is i will work and then keep putting it against my body and the moment it hits where my hips start, which I don't think is going to be too long after this, because all I need to do is come down my belly button and then very quickly it's going to open into my hips. And then when that happens, I will start to increase. Now, I would like to not increase too much. So I'll probably increase in maybe two rows and then that's it. And the way I would increase is I will probably aim to increase in this dark color just so it doesn't, uh, it kind of mess, um, it kind of blends in. You could also just do it with the white, to be honest. I'm just being too picky. I would should do whatever color, but I think I would just go with the gray just because I know I'm picky. So we know we have 90 rows here. You may have 92, 91, you may have 80, whatever the case is, depending on the size that you're making. Uh, but I will pretty much start by doing the normal double crochets like this. So let's say I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's say I do eight, nine. And this is my 10th so i will probably choose to go and do two double crochets in the 10th to increase okay like that so that every 10 stitches i will do an increase of my work so let's say i would go again and do 10 stitches and then when i get to my 10th so i'll do one two three four five six seven eight nine on the 10th i increase by doing two double crochets in the same stitch and then i just do that all around until i get back here okay and then it doesn't matter how you, it's gonna end up here but because you do go every 10 stitches and we have 90 you should end up doing your final double crochet very close to this one here because this is nine and th therefore the 10th one would be right here but let's say you have numbers that are not like that you just do until you no longer have uh any more to go so let's say you do your 10th and you increase right here you're not gonna increase right here you're gonna just do double crochet double crochet slip stitch and then do the next row 
and then the second row after you increase like this the next row which let's say would be the white you just do a normal round double crochet and then you go back to the uh, by changing color you go back to this color or whatever color you increased with and you do the increases in that as well and you can choose to increase less in that one you can do maybe every 20 rows so 19 and then in the 20th you increase but it will depend on how wide you need to increase it you can keep increasing until it uh, goes really wide depending on the wideness of your hips or you can increase just one time and then it's going to start to get wide because when you increase every 10 rows like this you're going to end up having 10 extra stitches okay so which means or nine 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 or ten so which means then you're gaining this much of extra space for your for your shorts okay you're gaining this much which is quite wide and if you do that and then do one row that is not an increased row and you do another one you increase by another 10 like this if if it is what you're looking to do and so on and so forth okay so i hope that makes sense in terms of how you will increase um, I will come back and show you and I will talk a little bit about the increase and how I did it as well um, So you guys can kind of get it. So that will be on the next clip of uh, that will come up after this Okay, but for now work until you have your hips starting to go out and then you start to increase See you guys in a bit. Oh, and of course also I forgot to tell you you will work the rest of the uh, pants uh, shorts here so even with the increase uh you after you, you 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 increase in the wide hips you will start to just continue working without increasing and when it gets to where you want it to start from to the opening of your legs okay so again the same thing you measure from where you want your shorts to begin let's put it like this so you can see it in in a, in a better perspective so let's say oh, this yeah let's say um let's say that this is where your belly button is in the middle here and you want it to go all the way let's say this where the hook is is where the opening of your leg is like right here then it means from here to here is how long you will do your your stitches so let's say then you measure like this and you go oh i need to do until i have eight uh inches and your eight inches will be where your legs start to open and then you come back okay so including the increases wherever you're gonna start to increase here come back when you reach the length including the band when you reach the length of where your your um, your legs start to open so that we can start to do the two legs individually okay and you can do this based on how high you want your pants to be or your shorts to be uh, as high as above your belly button as high as as low as below your belly button however you want it to be just do the length here that is equivalent to that okay and then come back so i'll see you guys then okay my lovelies i have gone ahead and completed the length that i want for my uh shorts here so as you can see this is what i have so far i ended up doing 24 rows here so from the gray and then we alternated to the up white i did 24 i am in the 24th um in the 24th row here okay so that was pretty much because i'm gonna have my waistband here go high which means it covers my belly button and then it falls down and where it has uh, it, it's my legs start to open i'm gonna start to divide it there so that we have our two legs here like this our legs leg openings here like this okay all right so i'm gonna talk to you guys quickly about some of the things i did and as you can see my work goes out a little bit like this and the reason for that is um i started to increase so i told you guys how you would increase if you need to increase your stitches um and i did here so we started with the gray and then the white and then the gray and then the white in this so third gray so which is one two three four five so in the fifth row i started to increase by doing two double crochets in one stitch after every 10 stitches so i did it here or wherever i started so it would be where my string is hanging here okay so from where i started off here i counted 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 double normal double crochets in the 11th i did two double crochets and i went 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 in the 11th i did a uh, double crochet two double crochets in one stitch and then i just repeated that all the way down so that is it here i increased in the fifth row and then I did number six without increasing. So if you're not changing colors, you still have to do that. So don't increase in the next row that follows your increase row. And then in the following row after that, 
I increased the exact same way. I went after 10 stitches in the 11th, I did two double crochets. Then I did a row of the white without any increases. And then in that row here, I did my increases. So I increased in row five, six, I didn't. In seven, I increased. In uh, the eighth, I didn't. In the ninth, I increased. So I increased one, two, three times. Three different rows I increased, except I was skipping uh, if one row after I increase and skip one row without increasing at all. Okay. So that is an explanation that I'm giving you for that. And that's pretty much it here. So for those of you, like I said, 24 rows here. Uh, and then if I measure to, to go from where or how long it is altogether. So if I put my tape, I don't know if you can see that. If I took, put my tape all the way up here, all the way down i have 11 inches so let's put it like this so you can see it on the camera so i have 11 inches all together from the way i stopped to where we started up including the the waistband so that is pretty much it for that and then what i will do now is so this is where i ended my work right here this is our seam right here where we have been coming and changing our color and then turning our work around so what I will do here is I will just cut this yarn off somewhere there and then I will slip stitch this and pretty much lock it out like that. Okay. So if I flip this work inside out, just so you can see, this is where we did all the color changes right here. Okay. So this is where we did our color changes right here. Everything is still hanging. We're going to weave all of these in. It does kind of look nice for it hanging like that, but that was not the plan of the project. We're going to weave all these in after. So, all right, we're going to move our work back to where we need to be working it from because we need to keep our st stitches consistent. And the other thing that I have also decided to do is I am not going to be... Um, uh, continuing the same pattern uh, with the, or the color change especially with the legs I'm just gonna do the legs in gray and I decided to do that one for two reasons one I ran out of this uh, of white color I only had one skin and I'm already out I think I have like that much left so uh, I don't have any more to alternate on the legs um, so we're gonna be doing it just in the gray and secondly I think it's gonna look nice because we have the gray uh, bend like this and then we finish it off with the gray on the legs it just happened to be that that's how it turned out i like it so that's it anyways so i'm gonna go ahead and count out the middle of my uh of my middle here on each side because this side here where all the strings are hanging is gonna end up being the side of our one of our side whether it's the left side of our hip or the right side it doesn't matter but i'm gonna put this on the side so that the front and the back looks really nice and neat so I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to count how many stitches I have all along here and then divide that by two. And then I'm going to put a stitch marker uh, on each side that gives me the equal number of stitches here and there. If I do have a stitch off, because if you don't have an even number, you may end up having one stitch more on one side than the other. It's not a problem. Just go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Put my stitch markers and then I'll come back and show you guys how to start the legs part. Okay, see you guys in a minute. Okay, my lovelies. So I have gone ahead and counted my stitches all around. So I did all around like this. I came up, it came up to 120. Okay. And then out of that 120, I divided it by uh, two. And then I just pretty much counted and I have half of that here. I have half of that on the other side here, okay? So in other words, I have 60 stitches here and I have 60 stitches here. And that comes up to my 120. So I just put a stitch marker there, put a stitch marker here, okay? Now we're going to go ahead and get started by doing uh, our opening here or actually the connecting from here to that and then work on one leg. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. And then when we have that done, I'm going to start doing a few rows on one of the legs and then I'll have you guys finish the rest and then we'll come back and do the second. So the first thing you will do here, uh, you will just do a slip knot so that we have a stitch to start working on our work. And also I going to be working on this across here but when it comes time to work on the stitches we're going to need to work on this side because we finished it off here and it would we would have had to turn our work and work this way okay so we need to keep our stitches here consistent all right so i'm going to remove this stitch marker here and put my hook in that stitch where the stitch marker was put my hook through 
and then bring that through like this okay like that and then we're gonna do a chain of uh, 10 so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten now why am i doing a chain of 10 as opposed to other number of chains the reason being is that this is your opening right here so what you will do is take the widest part of your leg of your thigh measure it in a circumference and then whatever that number is you're going to be able to determine how much how many um, how many stitches to do so if i put my tape measure right across it like that is about 10 it's about just a tiny bit below below 10 like let's say it's, it's eight nine point nine uh inches okay so and i know that uh, that twice which takes me to 20 let's say is going to be the circumference of the widest part of your leg um i don't have very wide legs this actually happened to be exactly if i put this across the widest part of my my leg this is what comes up to but if it's really really tight okay but because i want it to be a little bit loose i add this chain of 10 here because this is going to give me the extra wiggle uh wiggle room to be able to have my shorts fit comfortably on the leg and not hugging me too tight so that is why 10 okay so let's say you measure this here and uh and it comes below the widest part of it comes below your uh what your uh the widest part of your thigh is then you will need to me do that and and just measure this so all i do normally is i just put it across like this and then all you would need to do is measure from here to here to where the chain ends so for example this would end up being 12 okay and so which means then if you do this 12 times 2 because the other side is uh, you have to add the other side as well then you will end up with like say 24 so that would be the circumference of your leg and then you play with it based on how tight or or loose you want it to be so you could either end up doing um an extra five here an extra two an extra however to make sure your um the looseness of your shorts or pants or whatever it is is going to be appropriate for what you do all right so that's it uh, i'm gonna now remove so i have my 10 stitches here i'm gonna go across and remove my stitch marker put my finger where the stitch marker was and i'm gonna go right into that stitch where the stitch marker was bring my loop through and slip stitch okay so that is it here what i will do is you can either continue working your work here or you can cut it what some people do is they cut this here do a slip knot close it off and then they they are done working on that and then they come and put the hook somewhere to work i will i'm, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently so i'm gonna flip my work because i need to work that way to keep my stitches consistent i'm gonna flip my work like this okay so now that i have this here i'm gonna flip it like this and i'm gonna go into the very next stitch and do a slip stitch there as well and then do a chain of two so my chain of two here is what counts as a double crochet which goes with that stitch the middle part goes with this stitch here and then i just go ahead and do my double crochets across okay so i go there and do a double crochet i go here i do a double crochet double crochet and then i just work around all the way so i will obviously come and show you guys how you go over the bridge here over the middle part and then um and how to finish this row by connecting it to where we just started off here so but for now i'm gonna i'm gonna work it so that i can pass this area where we ended up our work so that you can see how to work around that area so i'm just gonna get to here and then meet you guys there okay so um yes you can see here i have reached the uh kind of like the beginning of how we started the 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 other part not not the middle of the pants but it's where we ended up kind of changing colors as we were working on the body of the shorts so and i'm just quickly going to show you here how to go so you have this stitch here obviously you have this stitch here you have to work into and this is why i wanted to come back and show you guys because we have to work into this stitch here, otherwise you're skipping a stitch 
okay so we work into that stitch Ooh, it's a little bit tight like that and then you move on to the stitch and then work your stitch so you need to be able to make sure your stitches are lining up like this okay so go ahead and work the rest of it here until you get to where the chain starts come back and i'll quickly show you how to work across the chains that we started and then how to bridge over to connect this one row that we just did to the beginning of where we started it so i'll see you guys in a minute okay my lovelies so i have worked my work all the way to where we have our chain here so as you can see i worked on this stitch right here that goes with the stitch from the previous row and as you can see this stitch here goes with the um uh, goes with the chain itself but because the chain itself is not a stitch what we do here or what i do uh, is that i go into this stitch twice so that it closes this gap here because i'll show you why so that when i work next into this stitch here which is the stitch that goes with the that goes with the chain it looks like this as supposed to if i don't do that stitch there and i go directly into going into the chain you will see the difference you see it has a bigger gap okay so i'm gonna do this like this and make sure that it closes this area a little bit tighter so that it's not a big gap i go there twice and then I skip over to the chain and I go and do my double crochet in the very first chain on this side. And as you can see as well, I am actually going in the back of the chain to do my double crochet as opposed to the front stitches, just so it doesn't pull it and make it look weird. Um, so I just go in the back of each chain and I complete my double crochet. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, this part of it is going to be a little bit challenging because you're going to have to get your stitches and kind of pull your stitch out before you work into it if you find this too difficult to do like this which is going in the back of the chain to grab the back loop to do your double crochet then just do it the regular way i just prefer it like this to be honest so i just do it like this usually so i just go like this see i'm working my double crochets in the back loop of that chain 10 and then i'm gonna go all the way across to the other side so i'm not gonna go off camera here i'm gonna show it to you guys all the way um yeah so and this is pretty much gonna be the toughest row to go into for, in terms of going on, on the stitch because it is the first time we're going into it the next time it's just gonna be our normal stitches that we work into but it's all worth it because it's gonna make it look nice and like even okay so i'm almost at the end here And often if you use a big crochet hook size like this too, it's a little bit harder. But hey, we do what we can do. We do what we need to do. Okay, so as you can see, I have one more stitch here to go into. So I'm just going to grab. And especially this last one is the hardest, just like the first one was the hardest. So you just have to make sure you go in, grab the back loop like so. There you go. Bring it through completed and then as you can see we're gonna go that way because we're working on one leg at a time so now again this stitch here is where this the chain came from so we need to go into this gap here right here to complete a double crochet so you should have your 10 stitches here already so this should be your 11th on this side and then as you can see this is our chain two that we started the row with we don't have to do anything and as you can see it lines up with this stitch right here if i make this thing straight if i make it straight it lines up with this stitch here these lines up with this stitch here and so i'm going to go ahead on top of that chain two and slip stitch like this see so this finishes this row this row is done we have one row of the leg finished then we're going to chain two turn because we need to keep our work consistent and then when you turn you're gonna go this chain two is a double crochet and it connects to this stitch right here so the next stitch you're gonna do is right on top of that double crochet and then on top of that double crochet and then from this point on it's as easy as abc's or one two three as people will say because now you just work along your stitches all the way around when you come to here you will have your double crochet last one go right here and then slip stitch on top of this chain two chain two turn and then do uh another row so what i usually do i've done uh, a pair of shorts before 
um these often i realize if i do a double crochet stitch i usually do four rows on this side and four rows on the other and that builds up a, a nice size for this type of shorts they're kind of like booty short ish but not without showing your booty i should say uh but they are like the the leg portion of it doesn't go too far down it's not it doesn't cover um majority of your thigh okay so i will do my four rows here and then i'll come back so we have already finished one we're starting the second i'll do the third and then the fourth when i finish that i'll come back to the video and then we will see if we need to increase to five to six we will but i will just do the four for now which is usually what i do uh, and then we'll come back to the video and then we'll decide whether we just go ahead and work the other one as well or we increase the number of rows on this side all right so see you guys in a bit okay my lovelies so i have completed my four rows here and i cut off the yarn quickly here just because i was working really fast uh, but anyway so i just slip stitch on top of that here we do a chain one and pull and that finishes the fourth row for the leg part so as you can see that's how pretty much one of the legs looks and that's done so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the opposite side which is right here because we need to work on this side like this so the side that you started with on the other side here is gonna be the exact opposite is how you do it so that you keep the the uh, stitches facing the same direction so now by the way if you think this is good and that's the um, the size that you want you can do what i just did which is cut it off and start the other side if you don't think it's enough maybe you want to make it longer then you can just continue to do the rows a little bit more before you um before you cut that off uh, but what i do is i just usually do four for this type of shorts uh, the other thing that you have a choice to do is when you cut these off, go try it on in the mirror. Put your one leg here, one leg here, and then see how this side looks like. And if it looks like something that you'd like to keep like that, then you keep it like that, okay? Um, anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with this uh, next one side here. So I'm going to do a slip knot just like we did the other side. I'm going to remove my hook. And in this hook right here, in this chain, uh, this uh, stitch right here, Keep in mind this stitch connects to this, so we need to go into the next one from there. And then you're just gonna bring your yarn through like that, and then you're gonna chain two. So one, two, and then you're gonna go ahead and continue doing your double crochets. So the next stitch will get a double crochet there, this stitch will get a double crochet, and then we're just gonna go all the way around. I'm not gonna explain to you how to do the whole thing over again, but you're just gonna do all the way to here. Um, I'm going to show you how to go here, cross it to here, and then uh, I will have you work the next three on your own. But uh, just work these double crochets all the way here. When you get to the other side of the leg right here, come back so I can show you how to transition from there and then working here and then coming to joining it up here. Okay, see you guys in a minute. Okay, so I have gone ahead and completed the row here. So this is where we started. I just went around like this. And now we have this middle section to do so we can connect it to the other side. So I came back to show you guys how to work on that. So as you can see, we did our uh, double crochet here. And we're just going to go into the next gap here and do a double crochet. And then we just move right across it. So we're going to do one right in this space in the middle here like this. And then we're going to go into the next gap and go into it like this. Now, when it comes to the chains here, you do have a choice to try and find the uh, stitches like this. Or you could just go through these big gaps here. It's up to you. I find that it's a lot neater if I do go on top and actually find the stitches as opposed to going under the stitch. Okay, so I go like this and I complete my double crochet. And then on top of this stitch, I go and find that stitch. It's a little bit harder because keep in mind it's the chain. We did the beginning uh, on the other side when we started that row. And now we're going along the chain for the other leg here, which is why we have to go through this struggle of finding the stitches because they're a little bit tight. But anyways, so you go along and you just grab the stitches. The best thing here is that you just have to go on top of each of the stitches here because uh, each of the um stitches that are lined up across or along the top of the previous double crochets on the other side okay so no that's not it and you have to also make sure you're going through both loops of the stitch and not grabbing just one just like i did there 
okay so we go along so i'm just gonna go along here and then i'll show you how to connect and then start the next row and then i'll have you guys do the next three rows on your own and we're gonna go right there oops again i'm just grabbing one so i need to grab both of them like that okay and as you will see here these look like a really big gap here the reason being is the, the string that we started the work with is hanging on the other side so it makes this gap look very big here so what i will do for that part is i'll just go un under that stitch like this and then i'll also go under the stitch for the next because the stitches are becoming too difficult there to be able to go through but as you can see it looks nice like this and then for here we have this gap where um, our chain came through we're gonna go into this gap here and complete a double crochet and then we're going to finally slip stitch on top of the chain two we started the row with the main thing is you want it to not have too many gaps and that's how we do that here and then we will chain two and turn and then we're gonna start our second row okay and from here on it's easy because you just do your double crochet uh, on every stitch across and then you will come back to this section here you will do your final double crochet here slip stitch on top of this chain two turn and then do four rows as well just as we did on the other side okay so i'm gonna do that off camera here when i come back i will have my remaining three stitches completed or three rows completed and then we'll pretty much end the project okay i'll see you guys in a bit okay my lovelies i have gone ahead and completed my shorts here so again as you can see this is the middle part of the shorts we have four rows on this side four on this side and that's the part that goes right between your legs obviously with one leg hole and the other leg hole here and that's pretty much it so i just completed my fourth row on this side i weaved in all the ends so i have nothing hanging anymore um this is the front here obviously because you can see the strap is here and this is the back um again just to talk about this a little bit so i decided to do a strap that would be that we can use to kind of bring in our waist a little bit these i often do with all of my either skirts or or, or shorts or pants um just because i have a little bit of wider hips and a little bit of a smaller waist so i do do this to be wide enough and stretched so that it can come up uh, uh it can come up through um to the uh to my waist from the bottom so that it can come um through my uh wide hips and then what i do usually is i do a strap like this to be able to just kind of bring it in like this a draw strap okay so i did that i did about a chain of 150 for this one i found these buttons i had a dress that used to have this kind of um beads this is made out of wood but it's a little bit older here so it's a little bit rusted and uh, how to change color a little bit but anyways the dress contained these some of these here so i just used two of them um and i put them here like this on the bottom of the strap i think it makes it looks nice um so yeah anyway so when i have these on all i will need to do is just kind of tie these up here however i want to tie it um and then that will be it so it will not be nice uh looking here like this the way that i put the strap in so after i did my 150 i put the these here uh, onto my darning needle this is big enough for this to go through this and then i just pretty much decided that i would leave a gap of three boxes right here three of these lumps so i started by just kind of going in here and i weave it and i go, go underneath like this and i go on top of this under this on top of this under this and I just alternate that all the way and then when I came to a point where I know I have one two three so on the fourth side I stopped there and this is how I, I weaved it in with this okay so that is pretty much it so this is the end of the project so obviously because um you may have not weaved in your ends yet go ahead and weave in your ends if you want to do a strap go ahead and do so you don't have to if this fits nice and tight on your waist but i do because i just want to be able to draw it in a little bit so go ahead and do all of that and it's pretty much the end of the video okay so thank you so much again you guys for watching this video to the end if you guys would like me to do different types of shorts let me know i will work on different types uh again just so i have a little bit of a playlist of the shorts of my channel because i don't have too many of those 
but if you do have any ideas on which type i can make uh, go ahead and comment in the section below and i will be able to try to do different ones and yeah thank you so much again for watching the video to the end make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet make sure you like comment and uh, share the video and i will see you guys in the next one bye